Hi guys and welcome to today's little outing of mathematics. Basically, uh, as you can see from the title, finding an equation of a straight line. Oh yes, finding an equation of a straight line it is. Um, in previous video, we were looking at the idea of uh, having given an equation, be it in gradient or intercept form. And if you remember, y equals 2x plus 3 is gradient intercept form, or just intercept form, where you might have 3x plus 4y equals 12, and actually sketching those graphs. And we threw in a few curveballs, like if you had the line x equals 3, or y equals 4, how we would do that. Um, this is now actually turning things upside down. This is saying, well, okay, what if you've got um, two points or a point in the gradient? Can you then go on and find the equation of the line? Well, of course you can. So basically, just to recap, so long as we know that y equals mx plus c, we can generally speaking find the equations of lines. As you can see here at this moment in time, in this equation, there are four unknowns. Now, when we have four unknowns, we generally need four equations to help us solve that. Right? Now, in this situation, there's no way we're going to be doing four equations. That will be uni maths. So the question, generally speaking, will always provide you three pieces of information. And generally, it will be an x value, a y value, and the gradient. And the way that they actually do that is they provide you the x value and the y value in the form of a coordinate. When we know that, we can put it into this equation here and find our gradient. Uh, sorry, and find our intercept and then go on and find the equation of a line. Now, this isn't the only way to be able to do it. Lots of teachers out there and lots of people say, well, why don't we have y minus y1 equals mx minus x1? And you can use that in the same way. And actually, in this situation, that drops out the equation of the straight line in a couple of lines of algebra. So two or three lines of algebra. My problem is that actually, I don't want to keep remembering lots and lots and lots and lots of different equations. So uh, this one here, yes, if you like to use it, where what they do basically is you put x1 and y1, so this is the coordinate they'll give you, and the value of the gradient in there, and it all drops out. Some of the questions I will actually show you how to do this, others I'll just do it using the y equals mx plus c. Now, what we also need to remember, and that's this little point here, is that coordinates can be expressed in lots of different ways. What do I mean by that? Well, coordinates can be expressed in the standard way, like 1, 2. And wherever they give you a coordinate, remember, that is secret code for an x and a y value. Secret indeed. But they might give it to you in terms of a table. Well, the top values here are the x values, and the bottom values are the y values. So this coordinate here could more traditionally be written as 4, comma, minus 4. And this one here, 6, comma, minus 8. So... With that in mind, let's get on to the concept of how do I find the two gradients, uh, sorry, how do I find the gradient between two points? Right, this is the section we're going to deal with. So find the gradient of the line joining points 1, 4 and 3, 8. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this. One is to draw a sketch. Now I know that 1, 4, if we have a set of gray, um, uh, axes, is let's just choose 1, 4 to be there. And I'm going to write 1, 4. And then 3, 8 is actually going to be up here, to the right and higher. So automatically, I can see there that I can draw a diagonal line. And wherever I can draw a diagonal line, if you remember, I can actually draw yup, a right angle triangle. Now, why would that be of use to me at all? Well, right angle triangles are great because it tells me I can find the height here and I can find the width here. So zooming in a little bit to make it easier for you to all see. What do we now see? Well, this change in height, otherwise known as, oh, I don't know, the rise, see where I'm going here, is given by the y values taken away. It starts at four and ends at eight, or ends at eight and starts at four. So I now know that has a rise of four. And this horizontal distance here is given by the change in the x-axis values. Well, it starts at 1 and goes to 3. So it must have a run, oh yes, a run of 2. And because we know 
that gradient, which is now given by m, is equal to rise over run, then what do I get? Rise, we decided was 4, run was 2, so my gradient for that turns out to be 2. And funnily enough, there's nothing more to it. Just drawing a diagram. Other people like to use an equation, and that's perfectly acceptable too. There is an equation out there that says m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is actually what we were already doing. But what they do is that, uh, that I know that lots of people go, well, okay, I'm going to write 1, 4, and I'm going to write 3, 8, and that's going to be my x1, and there's my y1, and there's my x2, and there's my y2. And they just substitute it into the formula. So y2 is 8, minus y1 is 4, divided by x2 is 3, minus x1. 8 minus 4 is 4 when I went to school. 3 minus 1 is 2, which gives me the gradient of 2. Now actually, that method works really well regardless, but what I see it work really well with is where we have negative coordinates. Right? Drawing sketches where we have negative coordinates can actually be quite challenging. So for example, let's do another example. If I had 1, minus 2 and 7, minus 6, trying to draw that with my little sketch isn't difficult, but it might actually lead to a silly mistake. So using the fact that m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives me minus 6 minus, and be very careful, minus 2. I always put things in brackets with negatives so that I don't make a mistake. And x2, which is 7, minus x1, which is 1. So minus 6 minus minus 2 is actually minus 6 plus 2, and 7 minus 1 is 6. So minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4 over 6, which cancels down to minus 2 thirds, right? So sometimes that form there actually can help us when we've got minus signs. Me, I do it another way again. I always just go, if I had 1 minus 2 and I had 7 comma minus 6, I always remember 2nd minus 2nd divided by 1st minus 1st. So 2nd minus 2nd over 1st minus 1st. No different from this one here. It's just that once you get to my age of 147, you actually make things a little bit easier. So that is how to find the gradient of a line joining those two points. Moving on to the next skill set is finding the equation of a line with a point 0, 4 and gradient negative 2. Now, again, we can either use y equals mx plus c, or if you want to use y minus y1, equals m x minus x1 perfectly acceptable so but actually i've already seen here this is a trick anything with a coordinate an x coordinate of zero anything with an x coordinate of zero if you remember will be on this line here otherwise known as the y axis which means the point zero four happens to be the y-axis intercept of this line. So yes, it's probably going to... Oh, no, that wouldn't be right now. See what I did there? That was silly. I thought it was going to be a positive gradient. It wasn't. It's actually a negative gradient. And so my line would go something along those lines. Well, having seen this little trick, I can now actually write my c value as plus 4. I know my m value because it gave me minus 2. And so I can write down straight away that my equation equals y equals minus 2x plus 4. What about using this formula here? Well, same thing now. Remember, the y1 and x1 values are the values they give me in the question. So 0, 4, there is my x1, there is my y1. So y minus 4 equals m is negative 2, x minus x1, which is 0. Y minus 4, multiply out the brackets, we give minus 2x, and anything times 0 is 0. So Y becomes equal to minus 2x plus 4. How many more lines working was there to do there? Two. Many of you probably were going, yeah, well, I could have done that in my head. Absolutely. But sometimes it's about using the right equation at the right time to try and make things a bit easier for you. But I suppose the key point here is look out for the big fat tricks. What about this one? Find the equation of a line with 4, 9 and gradient 3. Well, we'll do it the same way again. We'll have y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. 
And this one here will be y equals mx plus c. Right, is this point here a, a secret uh, y-axis intercept? Nope, because there is not a zero. There is a four. So I'm going to have to do this way. Right, if I now use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, don't forget the one there, we get y minus y1, which is 9, equals m3, x minus x1, which is 4. Multiply out the bracket before I do anything with the 9 is 3x minus 12. So 3 times x and 3 times minus 4. Now I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So y becomes equal to 3x minus 12 plus 9, or y gives me 3x minus 3. So how many lines of working out? 5 for that one. Now, y equals mx plus c. Remember, they have given you a y value, an x value, and an m value, which gives you this new c value. Now, a lot of people turn around and go, well, why do I need to find this intercept? If you remember, when we make lines parallel or perpendicular, they all end up with different c values. And those are generally, the biggest hint I can give you with this exercise is that all the time, you're probably going to want to find this value of c. So let's substitute it in and see what we get. y. So 9 is equal to the gradient of 3 times my x value of 4 plus my c value. So 9 is equal to 12 plus c. So c must equal minus 3. Which means I can therefore formally state my equation as y equals m times by x plus c. In that situation, four lines, five including the formula. So, yeah, about the same. In this particular instance, it's down to personal preference, which one you would do. And then we get to this doozy. Find the equation of a line with two points. Now, when we have two points, if you imagine we have one point here and one point here, we can find, using those two points, the gradient of that line. And then once we know the gradient of that line, we can then use y equals mx plus c. Ooh. We can use y equals mx plus c to help us find my new c value. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now, doing it this way, then what do we get? So we know that m is equal to 8. The second minus the second divided by the first minus the first. So that's 4 over 2, which equals 2. So my gradient is 2. Awesome. Using y equals mx plus c, I now know my gradient of 2. Do I know an x and a y value? Because remember, we're always going to have to find out this new intercept. Do I know an x value and a y value? And you might be looking and going, uh, well, I'm actually telling you, they give you two to choose from. And you can choose either of those because they are both on the same line. So I'm going to use the nice easy one, which is 1, 4. So I'm going to use the point 1, 4. So y equals 4, x equals 1. So 4 is equal to 2 plus c. c is equal to 2. And so, therefore, which are three dots, I now know my equation is y equals m, which is 2, x plus 2. Wow! Now if you were going to do that the other way, and sorry for running out of space here, Firstly, you'd have to use this equation here to help you find the gradient. So you'd know m is equal to 2. You'd have one coordinate position. And again, you do y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So y minus 4 is equal to 2 x minus 1. Yep. So y minus 4 will multiply out my bracket first. Gives me 2x minus 2. We'll add 4 to both sides to give me y is equal to 2x. Minus 2 plus 4. So y is equal to 2x plus 2. Wow. Now, these type of questions appear all over. And again, I've borrowed this question from the Cambridge Essentials textbook, not meaning to infringe copyright, just trying to expand on an idea. But they can actually give you questions here that hide the information. They try and trick you. So Carl invests some money in a simple savings fund and the amount increases at a constant rate. Now that's just trying to say that actually if we were to draw this, it would be a straight line graph. Right? So a constant rate means a straight line graph. He hopes to buy a boat, very exciting, when the investment reaches $20,000. After three years, the amount is $16,500. 
and after six years it's 18,000. Now actually this information here has been expressed as a very different way but that can be actually written as a coordinate. We can write that coordinate as 3 comma 16500 and 6 comma 18,000. And once I have those two coordinates my mind is already turning around saying ah oh, we've already done examples like this and yes that's how you're going to use it for part A. Right, that part A is going to use that to come up with an equation. My advice is do y equals mx plus c first and then change them later on to a equals mt plus c. Now why? A, they tell you, is the amount of the money after a period of time. And if we were to draw this on a graph, do they ask you to draw it on a graph? Nope, but if they did, time is along the side and the amount invested would be up there. All right, so I'm not going to do the question, but it's important to know that maths can put this type of stuff into a problem-solving question. All right, that's it for me. All right, I look forward to seeing you the next time.